Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to be discussing when you should set up a project as an actual project in Asana, what a good use case for that would be, but also discuss when not to create projects, because I think if you are not careful, new users in particular can end up in a situation where your list of projects on the sidebar can get pretty long. And I've worked with a number of clients who tell me they're getting overwhelmed because of the volume of projects that they have on their sidebar. So that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one support with Asana, optimizing your account, setting it up, getting more use out of it, training your team, then have a look in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. So let's get into this video. And I want to start the discussion by talking about and get you thinking about different types of projects in Asana. Now, from a technical standpoint, there are different types of projects don't really exist. Um, but I like to think about projects in different ways to help you understand different ways of using Asana. So the typical or classic use case for a project is for an actual project that you need to work on. A project typically is something like an outcome that you're working towards that has a temporary lifespan. So here's an example. This is a new product launch. So we're working backwards from this launch date. There's a bunch of phases or tasks that need to be completed, but essentially this project has a finite lifespan. Other examples would be marketing campaigns, events that you're planning, maybe clients that you're working with. These are all what I call temporary projects. And you can see I've laid this out here as phases of work. Here's another example. Here's uh, actually, let's go to Amazon, for example. Here's another sort of temporary project, a client that I'm working with, which has phases and key tasks that need to be completed. But again, this is temporary in nature. Another type of project that you can think about and consider using is what I call an evergreen project. Evergreen because the project is ongoing. So here's an example, I've called it admin and accounting. This isn't really a project. I mean, technically, yes, in Asana, it is a project, but I wouldn't consider accounting to be a project. It's just an area of work. And so for this project, I've got sections for sort of like the subcategories of work that need to be completed, like office admin, receivables, and payables. But we wouldn't consider this a project in the normal sense. Uh, and so I call it an evergreen project because it's just an ongoing area of work. And if I need to, I can dump tasks in here related to admin and accounting. And then finally, the final type of project that I like to think, of, uh, think about is a process based project. Uh, an example of this would be using Asana as a sales CRM, where again, this isn't really a project. Sales CRM is not something that's going to come to an end. It's not really a project that I'm trying to complete. But the sales CRM process I've set up as a project here in Asana. And you can see I'm managing leads through this sort of Kanban style of workflow. So those are good examples of when to create an actual project in Asana is either for actual big projects that you're working on, projects for areas of work that you need to manage like accounting or projects for processes that you need to manage like sales, customer support tickets, bug tracking, design requests, that type of thing. Those would all require an actual project in Asana. Now let's dig into one of those in a little bit more detail. Let's talk about those temporary projects again. So firstly, I think you should create an actual project in Asana for the temporary projects that you're working on. If the project is large in scope in terms of maybe it's something you're working on for three, six months or more. And if there's a lot of work that you need to complete as well, as you can see here, I've got, you know, not a small amount of tasks. There's quite a lot of work that's going to go through various stages. The other reasons to use an actual project would be if I want to take advantage of and use key features in Asana like the timeline view here. I've got my milestones, dependencies set up, uh, and so I can I can really see the, the kind of lifespan of this project. If I want to use features like the overview and track my milestones and goals, if I'm going to be using this in a portfolio and it's going to link into uh, yeah one of my portfolios here, I definitely need to have that set up as a project. If I'm going to be using the dashboard for things like reporting and I'm going to be using forms for submitting information into the project, again, I, if I want all these different features that Asana offers, I should set up my project as an actual project. Now, if you don't need 
all of these bells and whistles and features that Asana offers for your project. Maybe your project is quite small in scope, you don't have that many tasks to manage. Maybe the timeline of the project is a lot shorter. Instead of a project that's going to take three or six months, maybe it's something you're only working on for a couple of weeks or maybe even a month or so. In that case, possibly you don't have to set up a whole project in Asana. In which case, how I like to do it is I set up the project as a task in another project somewhere. So here's an example of setting up a new payroll system. This is what I call like a mini project. It's not something that's going to be done in one day, but it's not going to take six months. It's sort of somewhere in between. And so I've said, right, you know, I've allocated, let's say, about two or three weeks to this task. So I've got my date range set here. And you can see in my subtasks, I've actually created sections of subtasks. And you can do that using the shortcut tab N to create a section. And so very much like how I would set up a normal project, I'm actually using the sections to define the stages of my work here. And then I've got subtasks for the actual work that needs to be completed. Now, this is obviously quite a short list, but I could, I could build this out if I need to. And so again, the reason for doing it like this is, number one, it keeps my sidebar a lot cleaner and simpler. I don't have a project for every single project that I'm working on. This mini project, I'm actually just managing as a task, and it helps me to keep things a lot simpler. This is how I actually manage a lot of my own projects in my business. The, the key takeaway here is I just want you to be aware of different options and the limitations of different options. Again, I wouldn't choose to do it this way if I want to use features like the timeline. That is going to require the use of an actual project. But I think a lot of our work, a lot of these mini projects that we have going on can be set up as tasks rather than actual projects. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more, I go into ideas like this in a lot more detail in my master Asana program. So definitely check that out in the description below. One more time, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you'd like to get more out of Asana and need help setting up or optimizing your account, if you want to automate more of your project management process and you want to correctly train and onboard your team, then check out my Master Asana program. When you sign up, you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so you can get help from me and get your questions answered anytime you need support. You can also book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me where we can take a deep dive into your account. I can show you key features and I can even do group training workshops as well. And finally, you'll get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and covers topics that I don't cover on YouTube. So if you truly want to master Asana, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.